Hey guys, what's up? It's Heather with the Moscow, and today we're out here on the front walkway again to plant up pots that you should be very familiar with by now. These are my front walkway pots. I installed these a couple years ago and I have some videos on my channel about how I did that and how I set them up on drip. Um, I do pot these up every season. I do like to keep several things around that are potted up seasonally and this is one of them. And I try to make sure that I film a video every time that we've done it. Um, every year I pot these up with some variety of supertunia and uh, or the like and some other varieties of annual flowers and every year I'm less than thrilled. So I thought this year, um, first of all, I usually put like three or four things in this pot and that's way too many. Um, and then they peter out and I try to do something with them. So this year I thought I would just go for a tried and true and like some other places in my yard. Um, we are only doing Supertunia Vista Jazzberry and I bought these several weeks ago so they're now all like grown together. So I really need to get these planted out. Um, did that one get hurt? Yeah. Just go ahead and pull that off. Um, these plants are super vigorous and last year I did a comparison of different um, fertilizers. These were the plants I used. The, the two containers that they were in were far and away my favorites. They were just these giant mounds of these gorgeous purpley pink just really saturated color. We're out in the shade. This is pretty close to full sun up here, um, but it means that this will be super saturated color, which we have a lot of shady areas, so saturated colors are really welcome around here. So we're gonna pot these up today. Um, I do live in East Tennessee. This is um, 7B for the garden, and quite frankly, it's too chilly this um, spring, and I should have been out here earlier today, but I've been lazy. Um, and so they've been sitting around. I bought these because I wanted to get my hands on them because I knew I needed at least 30 and I thought I could probably get my hands on them, but I wanted to make sure, so I bought them several weeks ago. So they've been sitting around, so I'm trying to get them in the ground. But at the same time, I just had to pull everything into the garage because we had like 37 degree nights. And so up until this point, I haven't planted anything that I didn't feel confident I could cover or move if, if times got hard. So this is gonna be interesting, but I do think I have extras, so that's probably good. So we will plant all of these up. They are all watered on a drip system. Um, and they usually will get watered every single day. I also have previously only watered with fertilizer once a week. I'm gonna go to bi-weekly. It says on here every third watering. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. <coughs> every third watering, but I'm gonna go to bi-weekly on this. Um, and I also put this in my Pamela Crawford planter as well. So anything close to the house that's super tenia is going to be this, so it'll have some continuity. Um, and like I say, around here we don't do muted colors. I do have that Carding Mill rose, which is a pretty muted color. But I do, pr I like that color and I like that rose and that's why it's there. But I do prefer the super saturated colors. And so this will be, provide just that. Um, so when we go to plant them, I do not change the soil out in my containers every single time. I know that that's controversial. Some people do it because they don't want to perpetuate any problems or they feel like the soil is depleted. We had bulbs in here and despite my denial, it is too warm here to just put bulbs straight in the ground. I mean, I'm in denial. I do it every year. And my bulbs next to the driveway did great, but they could have done better had I have pre-chill them so this winter I'm going to pre-chill my bulbs before I put them in here but this one didn't do a thing the ones behind me barely did anything um, so we would clean those out if there were any in there but we're also going to put start with our um, continuous release plant food from proven winners these items are not organic but they do have chelated iron in them which will keep your leaves nice and deep green um, I really like this product. One of the mistakes I've been making every year is I put it in when I plant it and I leave it. I need to be putting it in every month and I need, basically I need to be fertilizing more often. The more food you give your flowers, the more flowers you're gonna have. And we want this to be the carpet of color with minimal green. Um, it will probably be all the way down to the ground by the time the season's over. But I'm super excited about these. I think these are gonna do really well here. Um, and previously I've done like mixtures of colors and it's just too busy. I want that giant just stream of mound up here. So I think it's gonna be really pretty. So basically what we're gonna do for each of these five 
and it won't look like much to start out with, but after a couple weeks of nice good heat, it'll look great. We'll just throw in some continuous release. <clears throat> these here gloves on which have dirt on the inside of them I need to buy more gloves and more drip tube but then when I go inside I just want to google plants not the stuff I need you know the not fun stuff so oh there's a bulb squishy it's like a thing of garlic you just throw that in the yard let that compost out there the voles can get it voles are my biggest nemesis so it says on these tags, these are again the proven winners, Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. It's a newer one that they introduced last year and I am in love with it. Everybody really loves bubble gum and it's vigor and how well it grows. I don't really like that light pink color. Um, I like light peach and I do like it in my clothes, but I like it. To, this is way more saturated. I enjoy that. It says that it's full to part sun, which towards the end this way, it gets kind of part sunny. So that'll be good. They get 12 to 24 and I can attest that they will fully get 12 to 24. So you really only need one in this container. I think these containers are either 12 inches or 14, probably 12. Um, and they're mounding, trailing, um, blooms to a hard frost, and they are an annual. Um, again, fertilize, 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 and they will need a considerable amount of water to keep them happy. So they'll be on drip up here. So that'll work. Look at those roots. Aren't you pretty? My pretty. So that's going to be all there is to her. Let's plop the next five in, shall we? Um, and I also, y'all know I have that hay rack that's like right next to my stairs. I will put two of these in there and that's it for that. It'll really be like a continuous color and I'm, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be really great. Um, so let's step back and start playing the rest of these. I'm also going to put, there's certain places in my garden where I just keep like annuals that I change out seasonally. Um, one of them is the pot next to my garage or the set of five pots next to my garage. And I'm thinking about actually making that just one pot because I feel like I want to do a mixture of plants in it this year. Um, but if I put, if I still have five, the trailer won't be seen and it gets kind of messy. So I'm thinking I might do, like just have the big pot and then move the other pot somewhere else. I really, really, really need to get out here and get after some weeds. Um, I'm hopefully after I make this video, and I'm going to make one more where I plant next to the driveway, same plants. Um, so you, you can see all the places that these are going. Um, maybe I'll have time. Do you think squirrels carried off these tulip bulbs? I mean, I'm not finding any remnants in here either. It's curious do also struggle pretty bad with voles. Um, I was telling the people that I work with about voles the other day. They had no idea. They're not plant people. Well, some of them aren't plant people. Um, about the struggle. I'm sure some of you know about the struggle. Um, and I will show you in that next video the most effective way that I'm finding to deal with voles. So as I plant these, I will go in here and put the drip down. I need, probably need to get some landscape staples. Drip tends to be very squirrely. It just seems like you, you have this cute little brown drip tube and you just like cycle it around. No, you're probably gonna have to tack it down because it's squirrely. By the, ooh, by the way, one of the more fun and effective ways that I find a weed is I have that weed blowtorch. Um, especially for the gravel next to my driveway, which to be honest, if I was doing it, I would not have put gravel next to the driveway and I'm not sure why they did that, um, but they did. I'm sure they had a reason and they're just not here to tell me about it. But um, I would not have done that. I would have gone grass or whatever right up to the driveway because it's just another 
touch point of maintenance really um, but especially there where it's hard to weed like you can come out here with a weeding tool or weed with your hands and do just fine but we can talk about gravel if you've ever tried to weed gravel it's kind of a pain so um, the weed blowtorch really good option um, I have thought about doing like some kind of Q&A you know so you guys can learn a little more about me but there's like four people that watch these videos <laughs> so maybe you're like screw it lady what would be the point I'm excited for this summer it's gonna be a good time but just to let you know a little bit about myself, if you're not familiar, um, I am a full-time, well, over full-time working mom of two of the cutest little boys, Wyatt, who is four, Jackson, who is 10. Um, usually, my husband is also, we work, both of us work over 40 hours a week, so Sometimes my yard doesn't look exactly how I want it to look, and sometimes conditions aren't ideal when I need to be out here gardening. Um, but that's just kind of the necessity of the beast when you're working that much. Um, we are both um, in the medical field. We actually met in college. Pulling weeds as I do this. Um, we do love to travel and that's kind of a we're gonna move down to the next one we'll continue this conversation that can get very interesting so we love to travel um, that can get very interesting in the summer when you know I, I need to be here babying my plants but I just want to get away we um, we like to ski we like to go to Disney and we like to travel internationally as well so when I'm not looking at garden things on the internet, I'm usually looking at travel um, things. So um, we prioritize that. The two things I'd say I spend most of my money on are travel and um, most of my expendable money, anyhow, travel and plants. So. Um, we do live here in East Tennessee in a log cabin. We did not build it. We bought it. We had no intentions of buying a log cabin, but the location was perfect. Um, I actually drive 50 miles to where I work. Um, so this was actually closer to the middle of our works, but still close to ta the town we want to live in. Um, but we did not have any intention of buying a log cabin. I love um, more mature, or unique homes. Um, the you won't find me desiring to have like a new construction in a neighborhood. I like a little bit of privacy because I'm weird. Um, but that's how we ended up here. We love our house. Our house is super unique. It's this modern log cabin got this cool walkway um, juxtaposed to a log cabin and set in the woods and it's really close to town but at the same time it's very private and we really really enjoy that about it I have been waiting to see if I'm gonna experience the phenomenon where the first year they sleep the second year they creep the third year they leap um, on these rose bushes behind me and that is certainly happening because the carding middle roses look the best they've ever looked. I'm really excited about them. Um, so speaking of living in the woods, as we're having this little planting chat, um, interesting story. I was driving to work the other day and I had just dropped my kid off at school. Um, and I, it's like this tulip bulb is, I smelled it because it reminds me of like garlic. <laughs> it's obviously not. Um, but 
So I dropped my kid off at school and I was driving to work. Um, and all of a sudden, a turkey flew up and hit my windshield. A turkey. I've never known anyone to hit a turkey. And ever since then, y'all, I'm, I'm not kidding, every day, there is a turkey that comes in the backyard and he's like, I in my garden? I don't know. I know what's going on, but y'all comment below if the turkey apocalypse is coming to you too. But he smashed. I'm gonna have to get a hold on, I'm gonna have to get a thing for this. He completely decimated my windshield right here in spring when at any given moment I could get a wild hair and decide that I need to go to the store and buy an obscene number of plants. That happens fairly frequently. When this grows up, you won't be able to see this drip tube, so I'm not super concerned with keeping it covered right now because in a couple weeks, this is gonna mound over and you're not gonna be able to see it, so it'll be fine. If it gets to where it's aggravating me, I'll come out here with another flotchy flotch. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this pot right here. Maybe I'll put some succulents in it. lizard under there. This is what I don't like about lizards and snakes and things of the like. They startle you. And obviously I startle fairly easy. Hey, hey, hey. Ugh. Well, I bet that made good for video though. <laughs> Let's move over here and plant one more thing. They're about to burst, looking so good. This bed is a general rule, needs a makeover again. So I thought I would clip back some of the dead growth. I think I went a little too wild. So I think I'm gonna dig this up, divide it and spread it over here some to take care of that. Back here, I need to do something and I may just do annuals right there. But then I've got this clump of Rudbeckia. I think I'm going to dig it up, divide it, and then do all the way like a big swath of Rudbeckia. It would probably be really pretty. The bright yellow with the bright red, the end of summer is going to be super, or not red, but the Vista Jasper is going to be really pretty. So that's the plan. That's the plan, Stan. That hay rack right there as well. Same way. Same deal. We're just gonna pull out we're just gonna pull out these pansies that I put here in the spring just so that it wouldn't be barren. I got tired of looking at nothing. I look out my bedroom window like right here a lot, so I like it to be pretty in all whatever states, all uh, seasons. We'll just throw these over here. I'm currently working on that flower bed. I think I want to fill it with hydrangeas. I think that's the plan. I think we need to knock some of the soil off. We're only going to put two of these in here. And I did a sweet potato vine last year. You know, the first year that I really did like a bunch of annuals, I did sweet, sweet potato vine up here um, on the ground. And I really loved it. Um, then I did it in this container. And not so much. It was all stringy. First, first thing is that these, this is not a very big hay rack. So it can't really support, I guess, a lot of roots. I don't know. So anyhow, that's the story with that. This is also fed on drip. 
Um, being as it's such a small root ball, I don't see how it could not be fed under it. Um, sorry, a container, soil, surface, whatever. So it's, it's fed on drip. It's all on the same line. So I have a line that runs every day and they're all fed on that. Just gonna try to push the hay rack liner back in a little bit. I love hay racks, I think they're super pretty. So that's that. Um, the other benefit to this particular hay rack is that when you're driving up the driveway, this is kind of what you see and it's really pretty. It's really pretty. Again, the key here, what I'm going to try to do is make sure that I come reapply my continuous release fertilizer on a more regular basis so it's not just like one and done and whatever. So now the trick is to try to fit this root ball, which seems like it's taller than said planta, in said planta. Oh, no, it's fine. That is the thing, though, that I do like about spring and fall plantings a little bit more is that the minute you plant them, they're chock full and they look great. Whereas in the summer, you got to at least wait for some growth. So, yeah, then there's that. have it beautiful can't wait for this to kind of grow up and fill over and it is fertilized day so I will be fertilizing this today good lord willing in the creek don't rise so anyhow that's gonna be it for me in this video I just wanted to take this time with you guys to show you what I'm planting in these containers and plant them out with you because we do do these together every time we do it together it's like it's like a it's like a hug thing like we could fist bump or high five or whatever it is the kids do nowadays. Um, I was at work recently and brought up eHarmony and I uh, got called middle-aged and I went home and I told my husband that I got called middle-aged and he said you are So that happened. It's just so beautiful up here, you guys. Like the trees have all leafed out and things are looking pretty, things are growing. Just nothing like what planting something and watch it grow and watching it do well. Super, super exciting. What is that over there? That is a piece of basket. So now that we've been startled, I do need to go down to the other section and uh, plant the rest of these out. I had 30. I just planted seven. I put seven over there, so that's 14. Do I have another 15? That's actually about right. I guess my math was right. Anyhow, I'm rambling now, so then there's that. Um, you guys need to comment below what you're doing this year um, for all your containers. Comment below um, if you also thought it was funny that I got startled because I'm sure that looked great on camera. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Um, and we will see you in the next one. I have got to do something about these weeds. Let's just not look, okay? See you guys. Bye.